All right, so I just bought this Skag SWZT 52 inch mower here. Um, I got it for a pretty good price, used obviously. Um, but the reason why I got it for such a good price was because it's got a couple issues with it. Um, so surprisingly, this is probably one of the first machines I've ever owned that the engine is pretty much good. Um, I already looked at the air filter. Um, that looks clean. The guy just had the oil changed in it, so that should be fine. Um, but the, the thing starts right up and it doesn't smoke at all, so I won't have to worry about the engine. But the downside is it's got a couple other issues with the hy hydro system on it. So the issues with that are, first of all, this control here, it's missing a spring. So that's not springy like this side. Um, it's missing the speed adjustment thing down here. There's like kind of like a bolt that goes into this piece. Let's see if you can see that. The bolt that goes in there, so I just have to order that. The guy said it fell out. I don't know if that's what happened, but... Um, and then the hydros do look like they're leaking oil a bit, especially this pump here. Um, so we're going to have to dive into that and see what the leak is. Um, the hydros feel good when you drive it. So I don't think the actual pump itself is bad. Um, I think it just needs some new seals possibly. Um, and then you can see the spring on this side is there. But over here, the spring is missing. So I went ahead and ordered that as well. Um, the tires are pretty bald on it, so I went ahead and ordered those. Um, those should be coming in soon. Um, so yeah, and then other things like this this reservoir, it's got no hydraulic fluid in it, which tells me it's definitely leaking a good amount. Um, so yeah, we just got to dive into that. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove this skid plate, make sure all the hydros are intact um, and they don't have any cracks in the, the uh, case here. And see if we can see where it's leaking from all right so i got that skid plate off um this thing looks pretty bent out of shape um not really too impressed with the uh quality of this skid plate i feel like i can't even blame the uh, previous owner of this machine for that being all bent up i mean i guess I, he hit stuff with it which he shouldn't have hit but i mean those hydro pumps are pretty low to the ground when this thing's not jacked up and this this isn't very thick i feel like that should have been thicker but um, over here, underneath it, now that we have a clear view, um, we can definitely see that this pump is leaking a good amount of fluid. Um, this one looks pretty dry underneath. It doesn't look like it's really leaking at all. Um, but this one, I don't see any cracks right now. I'm going to clean off all that, uh, um, fluid and see if I can find any cracks. But it looks like we definitely, or we probably have a leak from this piece here, um, and then it looks like maybe out of that seam right there and possibly out of this, I'm not really sure. Maybe over here. Not really sure where it's coming from because there's so much fluid everywhere. But um, let me clean that off and see if I can find any cracks. All right, so what it looks like is right here, this is kind of, let me put the light over there. This piece here is kind of just a skid plate for um, the hydro filter, which is back here and that's, all dirty you can see it's white there but that's just a hydro filter so what I'm thinking is maybe if I'm lucky the hydro filter is just on loose and that's what's leaking fluid um, I'm not too convinced that that's my only issue because looks like it's pretty gunked up all around this thing but um, this machine isn't that old so I don't think it's um, I don't think that that's out of the question so I think what I'm going to do is just clean this off really good, um, top off my uh, hydro fluid level, um, see if I can tighten this filter up, and then drive it around a bunch and see if it gets more oily. All right, so I came home late last night, um, and I noticed that there was a puddle of oil underneath this valve cover here. Um, so I went ahead and I pulled the valve cover. I was like, all right, well, maybe that's, that it's a bad gasket or something. And, well, there was no gasket on there, so that's a bit concerning. Um, that's not good. I guess someone had this cover off for whatever reason, um, and they didn't bother to put a gasket on it. So I'm hoping that no other gaskets are missing, um, but I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. I didn't find any other leaks, but, yeah, I guess we just have to wait and see. But, anyway, the other thing I noticed when these uh, this valve cover was off is that there's no play in these... Uh, valves here so the valve lash is definitely off so i'm gonna have to go ahead and adjust that um, i just downloaded the service manual for this 
engine and it looks like see this is a bit of a different design usually you just have an adjuster nut right in the middle or sometimes you have one um, right at the end on top of the valves uh, but for this one it looks like the way we adjust it according to the service manual is we have to loosen this um, nut on here and then this is an adjustment screw so we have to adjust that um, and get the proper lash um, and then test the uh, lash with a feeler gauge all right so i just took off the spark plug um, and I move the piston to top dead center, um, and that's all the way up at the top right before it goes back down. Um, you can see the spark plug looks nice and clean. Um, the red's no big deal. That usually just comes from additives in the fuel. So that spark plug's good. That's good to see. Um, but you can see the valves here. So the minimum is 0 0.10 millimeters, and then I think it goes up to 0 0.15. So that's your valve clearance for both the intake and exhaust. Um, this is on the smaller end, and as you can see, we cannot fit that in there, so the valve lash is off. Um, so in order to change that on this engine, what we have to do is loosen this lock nut here, which I already did a little bit, um, and then we're going to loosen this. This is the adjuster. All right, so right there we can see it's got a lot more uh, play in there. So we're going to insert our fuel feeler gauge, tighten this uh, adjuster back up, and then tighten this lock nut back up so that it stays um, in the right spot. All right, so as you can see, I have these two adjusted. Um, this is a feeler gauge. Slides right into both of these nice and snug, so those are adjusted properly. All right, so I got that uh, spark plug and cover reinstalled. I used a gasket maker, as you can see, um, but that's just because I don't have a gasket with me here, so I'm gonna, I, I already ordered that, but for now we're just using gasket maker. Um, I tighten these, uh, down by hand, um, but I'm going to wait an hour before I uh, really tighten them down because I want the gasket maker to start to dry a little bit. That's the way you get the best seal. You tighten it by hand and then you just go and torque it down after an hour. So we're going to go ahead and do that and then once the new gasket comes in, I'll go ahead and re reinstall that. So after I cleaned this thing off and drove it around for a bunch, um, I I can't find any oil leaking from it. So this is, I drove it around a bunch. I probably drove it for like two hours. And um, I, I just can't find any oil. There's not any oil leaking out of this one. And this one either. I mean, didn't really look like that one was leaking much, but still looked like it had some fluid. But this one, I mean, you guys saw before, there was fluid all over this thing. And it doesn't look like the fluid is very clean. So I don't think someone just changed the fluid. Um, otherwise I would say maybe someone took the filter off and they didn't, they, you know, they got oil everywhere and, uh, they didn't clean it off afterwards, but it doesn't look like it's been changed in a while. So I'm not really sure what that was all about. Um, I'm going to try and drive it around a bunch more. Maybe I have to wait until the oil gets really hot. Um, but right now it doesn't look like it's leaking anything. So, I mean, I guess that's good. Um, I already bought the seals, uh, the seal kit for it. So I guess I'll have to send that back, but. Yeah, I got to see if it um, continues to leak or not. I noticed that this thing was running a little bit rough, so I think what I'm going to do is just pull the carb and do a carb clean on it real quick. So in order to do that, I'm just going to take this big air, air filter cover off, pull the air filter, um, pull this little tube here, um, and then we should be able to just remove all the linkages and fuel line, um, then pull these two 10 millimeter nuts off and slide the carb right off. All right, so it's still not running that smooth. Runs okay at full throttle, but other than that, it's not sounding that good. And at full throttle, it kind of sounds like it's backfiring really quietly, so I don't know what's up with that. Carb seems, seems to be good. I tested it. It's running on both cylinders. Maybe it's got like a vacuum leak or something. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look more into that. All right, so here's where I'm at with this thing. Um, I looked through everything again. I tried adjusting stuff, um, and nothing was working. Uh, but I did find out, I didn't even notice this when I bought it, and I don't even know how I didn't notice this, but that's not the original muffler on there. It's not the one that's supposed to be on there. I don't know where it came from, but it's not the right one. So 
what I'm thinking is I, I realize it's it's running lean because if I put the choke on it runs better so I just ordered a new muffler and hopefully that fixes it because I don't want to deal with drilling the jet or anything I just want it to be right so I did find the leak um, or I didn't find the leak I, I did um, get it to leak a little bit more um, there's some fluid down there only a little bit but there is some fluid and it looks like it's coming from the top it almost looks like it's leaking out of where the uh, this hose attaches here so I'm gonna pull the wheel off um, and see if I can get a better look at it uh, my tires also came in for it so we're gonna install those um, and yeah we'll go from there so it looks like in here it's leaking from up top As you can see how much grime and um, fluid there is up there and then what it looks like is it's coming down um, from here kind of going around this filter and then dripping from the bottom there so you can see it kind of runs along here i don't think this is leaking because this is dry and i don't think that's leaking because it would make sense that it, it uh, took a little bit of time for the uh, oil to come down and uh, sh actually show up down here so i don't think this seam is leaking i think it's just up there so i'm gonna pull this hydro pump out and see what i can find all right, so I finally got this thing pulled off here. It's uh, it's in pretty rough shape. Uh, you can see all these fins were broken off here, and the other side's even worse. There's no fins on it at all. So that's not good, um, but I haven't touched this thing at all, really. And it looks like the leak is definitely coming from here. You can see all this fresh fluid that kind of washed away all that stuff. And there it is coming down and around, it looks like, from that. Um, the other thing that could be leaking is this piece here, but I'm not sure. So I got to see, I have all the seals here. I bought genuine hydro gear parts. See, that's the stuff I needed, but it comes with all the new seals and everything to do it. So I, I'm not sure if I need to do all of them um, or if I need to take this whole thing apart in order to change this seal or whatever's leaking there or that one. Um, but I'm going to start diving into this and see what, see what I can do. So I just cleaned this off a little bit here, and right away, I didn't even touch this with a wrench or anything, but this is just loose, so let's try and pull this thing off here. Let's see what's under there, if there's a seal or anything like that. I don't think there is. A, I bet this is just an MPT thread, um, but uh, it looks like there is no ring. And yeah, we got some more fluid coming out of there, so we'll let that seep out, and then... Uh, We'll go ahead and change that o-ring and tighten that up real nice so that new o-ring is installed on there i'm gonna just reinstall this back on the pump here those parts are all installed so now i'm gonna go ahead and take this off and then only because that gasket in or that seal in there doesn't look too good and i feel like that could be leaking as well so I, since i have it all apart here and this thing is all open i'm just gonna go ahead and pull this hub off and try and change that seal out so i got this thing all cleaned off here or most of the way i didn't go crazy because obviously it's just going to be at the bottom of uh, the mower there and it's going to get dirty again but at least now we'll be able to tell if it does start to leak again or if this starts leaking or this or whatever else starts to leak i'll be able to tell where it's coming from um, i actually changed my mind on changing this piece or sorry not this piece the seal in there because i don't have a socket big enough to get this nut off so if it does start to leak it's easy enough to do on the mower all i have to do is just take the wheel off so i'm not going to worry about that now if it is leaking i'll change it later because that's super easy to do so i wound up changing the seal all i had to do was pull a, uh, a snap ring out right there it was right in there just pull that out and then you'll have this piece you can pull that right out and then you can pry that seal out with a screwdriver um, in the kit here it came with a new one of these, so I popped that up right on there. And then how this goes back together is this should just drop down right back where the uh, where it was. And then, yep, fits in there nice and snug. And then it also came with a new snap ring. And I'll go in and go ahead and install that right in there, just like that. So I got that thing reinstalled. Um, let's see that. It came with a new one of those, too. I'm not sure what those are called, but... Came with a new one of those, so that should be all set. Wouldn't, shouldn't have to worry about that leaking. Um, and then this piece here, um, I'm going to change the seal and snap ring under here because, again, I have it all taken apart and it's on my workbench, so why not do it now? So I'm going to pop this off with an impact. 
just like that. Nut came loose. And this thing, I ordered two new ones of these two. I think I already said that, but yeah, so it looks like we got all those. Um, and then I'm just going to get my snap ring pliers, pull that snap ring off, and then pull the seal out. So once you get all that stuff off and the seal pulled out, this is what it looks like. Um, there's a bearing down in there. Um, and I would really recommend, if you're doing this yourself, I would just recommend you clean off the uh, gunk and dirt from the uh, outside of the seal before you take the seal off. That way you don't have to deal with cleaning it after because if you don't clean it and then you try and push this seal in, you're going to just push all that dirt down in there. And if you take the seal out before you clean it all off, then you risk dropping some dirt down in the bearing. And we want to keep that area clean because any dirt that gets in there could wear out the bearing and we don't want to have to deal with changing that bearing out too. Um, while you're in there, you can see if that bearing is nice and tight, which this one, it is nice and tight. So we're going to go ahead and reinstall this new seal. The way we're going to do that is we're going to take a little bit of gear oil, just put it on the inside here just so it doesn't wear out too fast. Um, whether you need to or not, I usually just do it. If it if you don't need to, then you all the only uh, consequence is you have a little extra uh, gear oil on there, or in this case, it's actually 20W50 motor oil, but um, you'll just have a little extra on there. Um, and some of these things, they actually did come with grease already on them, like this one for the uh, output where the wheel is. There's already some grease in there. So I guess that one needed to be greased. But um, anyway, I'm going to put this on, um, put a little bit of oil on this, and then just pop it right in there. should be able to put it in by hand. If you, if you can't put it in by hand, you want to be really careful because if you bend this in any way, it won't seal right. So you want to make sure you don't uh, bend it. Um, and then after we put that in, we're going to reinstall the snap ring, which they gave us a new one in this kit. So we're going to go ahead and do that and then reinstall the pulleys and stuff. And then in my case, like I'll put my new, uh, new, uh, fan here. So I got everything reinstalled here. Um, the, this new fan piece, I didn't get these in yet because this is the next day now, but I'm going to go ahead and reinstall this back on the machine. Um, this, this shouldn't be too hard to replace when it's on the machine because I just take that cover off. You see, we have full access to it. So I'm going to go and go ahead and reinstall, reinstall this. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to do this thing because to be honest, the reason why is I've never worked on hydros before. I don't know how this works and I, this seal doesn't look like it's leaking. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to take it apart and have it be a real pain to put it back together. I don't know what's under there, but if it is leaking, it shouldn't be hard to replace on the machine because it's right there. Um, so like I said before, since this is on my workbench now, I just changed uh, these three seals. But other than that, it should be pretty easy to do any other work when it's on the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall this. If it does start leaking, then I already have all the seals and I can do it when it's already on the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall this. You can see I put two new tires on it already. Um, I didn't film that because it's just changing tires. And if you want to go and see a video on changing tires, there's plenty of them on YouTube. But... Yeah, I got both both these tires on here. They're the High Run brand. I just got whatever cheapest ones I can find. Um, but yeah, those have a nice tread on there now, so we shouldn't be slipping all over the place. Um, the way I change tires is, here's the gist of it. I just use this Harbor Freight mini tire changer. Um, if you're not using one of these to change your, your uh, tires, you're basically doing it wrong. I mean, this is like the best 40 bucks I ever spent. So if you are changing tires on anything small, I think this is up to a 12 inch tire. Uh, yeah, 12 inch tire says it right on there. But anything up to a 12 inch tire, I mean, it's super nice to have the bead breaker and just a place to hold it. It comes with a mount you can put right on your workbench, but I usually just slap this in the vise and then it, it goes pretty much on any small tire and then it makes it super easy to change these tires. It took like 15 minutes each. So if you're not changing tires for one of those, you're doing it wrong. Just go buy one of those. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go ahead and reinstall that hydro pump and see how it works. So I got that hydro pump all reinstalled. It uh, it wasn't too bad to reinstall. The only hard part was really dealing with this thing. And the problem with that was it wasn't really connected to here. Um, I thought it was before, but there's a nut that was missing right there. That nut was not there. So I just put a new one of those on there. And then I couldn't fit a wrench in between there to hold the nut while I tightened that down the bolt. Um, so what I had to do was jam a... Uh, chisel in there and that in between this, this deck here and the nut and then that prevented it from turning so I was able to tighten it down real nice. So now we're just going to go ahead and drop this thing, put the wheel back on, 
um, and then we're going to go ahead and change the hydraulic fluid in this or the the uh, oil in this whole system um, but first I got to go to AutoZone and get a new filter so I'm going to go ahead and do that now I got my new muffler here you can see it's brand new I got the tube as well um, and it wasn't too bad it was like 150 bucks and you might look at this and say, well, I don't know why you bought the new muffler. Like, it could be a plenty of, of other stuff. And, yeah, I understand that. It could be a bad fuel pump, which is actually going to be my, my, next, uh, my next guess on this thing. But it also just needs to be replaced. Like, this, is, this muffler is not right on there. And what I also found was someone had went and put, like, nuts underneath the mounting mounting plate on this this mar which is just garbage like that that can't stay like that and this thing it's already it's it's just touching the mower here it's it's not supposed to be like that and with the the new muffler the brand new muffler was only 150 bucks it's like all right this thing it just needed that so if this doesn't fix it i'll go ahead and throw a fuel pump at it and if that doesn't work i'll just probably buy a new carb and we should be good to go but other than that it's just that's why i need the new muffler this thing is i mean look at this is that's just garbage work like it's it's not supposed to be like that. I mean, I don't I don't know who did that, but that that's not right. So this muffler's all installed on there. It's uh, it seems pretty nice actually. I don't I don't think it's a uh, OEM muffler. I got it on eBay and it was only 150 bucks, but it, it was pretty nice. I didn't have to massage anything into place. It all just fit right in. Came with all the hardware and uh, yeah, even those uh, pipes there. I I pulled it out of the box and I was like, oh, maybe I should have bought an OEM one. I doubt these are gonna line up, but lined up perfectly and uh, everything fit together nice and it came with all the hardware so let's uh, start it up and see how it sounds so it runs a little bit better but it's not fixed kind of backfires a little bit So it kind of seems like it's being starved for fuel. So I'm going to try and put a new fuel pump on it um, and maybe dive into this a little bit more and see if I can figure something else out. But right now I'm leaning toward a fuel pump. So I'll go ahead and research this a little bit more and see what I can find. All right, so I have that new carb on there and this thing is running much better. It runs perfect now. Idle's good, and I, I just had to tune the uh, uh, max throttle a little bit to get it perfect, but now it's good, so that's all fixed. All right, so my parts finally came in to fix this control, the speed control lever, so everything that'll go right there. So I just have to look at the diagram and see how those go on. And then I also got a bunch of new stickers for it that I'm gonna install as well. These were like a couple cents each when I was looking at the other parts. I was like, oh, might as well just buy these. It's only a couple bucks for all of them. So that'll look so much better too. Um, so I'm gonna get started on that now. So I got all that, that stuff set up there. Just looks like there's two bearings to ride on these and then it'll lift and lower that whole thing to control the speed. But I'm in the middle of changing out these um, fans here that go on the top of the hydro pumps. So um, here's a good trick for you guys. Um, whenever you see one of those squares and stuff like this, a lot of times you see them on cars for uh, serpentine belts. Um, you can just put a ratchet in there um, and take the tension off the belt just like that. And that'll help um, center that pulley on there because when the tension's on it, it's gonna be hard to get it onto that star piece there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue installing these uh, cooling fans. All right, so I got those cooling fans installed. They work nice and they blow a lot of air out the bottom of the mower. And then I added the real gasket to this uh, valve cover here. So that way I could uh, didn't have to rely on the gasket maker there and that's all uh, finished right. And then I also adjusted the uh, this lever here so that the thing drives straight when you're in a selected speed since that works now. Um, so now I'm gonna do the decals and the way I'm gonna do that is after I take, or before I take these uh, uh, stickers off, I'm gonna outline them just like I did here in marker. That way, when I put the new one on, I know how to line it up. And after I get the new one on, I'll just take uh, an acetone or something else to get rid of the, uh, the marker there, and hopefully that won't remove the sticker with it. All right, so I got those stickers installed. They look so much better. Um, so you can actually read them now. 
and of course the most important one this one you couldn't read at all and now you can see those nice and good got this one installed i didn't buy these ones but i think i'm actually going to buy them they were the more expensive ones and i was like uh if it looks good the other ones i'll buy it so i think i'm going to buy that that one for both sides but they look much better so now i'm going to go ahead and level the deck and i'm going to do that by these guys here you can slide them wherever you want on the uh that slot there and then put things underneath the deck to hold it and i gotta look in the service manual there should be a certain pitch for the deck so i think you want the deck pointed down slightly so it cuts like that um otherwise if it's tilted back it'll the uh mower's gonna work, have to work really hard to cut the grass and i'll have to cut it twice um, so I got to look in the service manual and I'll let you know what I find. I just checked and it says the front and rear should be equal and obviously side to side should be equal as well. And they tell you to just kind of set it to the uh, setting you usually mow at and adjust it from there. But the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to place some two by fours or some blocks, blocks of wood underneath the deck so that it's level all the way around. And then I'm just going to loosen all the chains and, and then tighten them to make sure they're all at the same level, just like that. And then I'll measure it to make sure I got it right. All right, so I just got this deck leveled. Um, I ran into an issue where I didn't have enough adjustment on the two front chains here. And I actually wound up cutting one link out. Um, I'm not sure why I had to do that. Right now it's exactly where it, where it uh, should be in the adjustments. It's not all the way down. It's not all the way up. So it, it seems fine there. Um, and it, it, the deck is, is perfectly level now, but um, yeah, I just couldn't get a, enough adjustment out of it. And I looked on the uh, the uh, diagram, and these two chains should be the, the same. And they were the same amount of links, but I just had to cut one out. I'm not sure why, but everything works fine now, and the deck is leveled. So I guess that's fixed. I, I'm confused as to why I had to do that, but the deck didn't seem bent or anything. The frame seems like it's not bent. Um, so I'm not really sure why that happened, but it's it's level now, so it's it's fixed. Next, I'm gonna take away those nuts underneath the mounting plate. Um, still don't know how those got there or who put those there, but that's just a terrible job. Um, and I think the way I'm gonna do that is first loosen up all the bolts that hold that down, and then I'll go underneath here and put a floor jack underneath that uh actually you know what yeah i'll put a floor jack right underneath the shaft that comes out of the engine um just to lift it up a little bit and i'll remove those nuts and then uh let the floor jack down and that should lower the engine back onto the uh, mounting plate here and not nuts all right, so when I got this thing, it was missing a spring, so I just went to the hardware store and I picked up some new ones and I wanted to try and find ones that were a little bit lighter. See, I installed one there. I was gonna get two of them anyway because I was assuming the one that was already on there was probably a little bit stretched out, but I went to the hardware store and just picked up a couple springs and I wanna get some that were slightly lighter, so not as heavy, so that these controls here would be less hard to control. And this one I just put on there feels really nice. It's it's super light and not hard to pull at all. So I'm going to try and install that same one on the other side and see if this machine is still usable. I think it'll be fine because it seems like it just needs to be there so that this lever returns. See, that's uh, driving right there. And then this would be reverse. So I think this lever just has to pretty much return to where it is. I don't really think this the spring has much to do with the the hydraulics assembly. I think it's really just for the controls. So hopefully this thing still drive fine with that and that would be great because it would be a lot less wear and tear on my hands and my tendonitis would definitely feel a lot better with that. So I'll install the other side and see how it goes. All right, so I got those springs installed. Um, I posted on a uh, Facebook group and some I got a bunch of answers, people saying, oh, that doesn't control the spring tension or the tension you feel. But I think they're referring to the, uh, or they're used to the, uh, Skag zero turn mowers like the ride on ones because this one it just connects directly to that lever there and then this is what your hands are feeling essentially so and then the other 
uh, comments I got were like, oh, um, they really put those on there t so that uh, when you're driving over bumps, bumps and stuff and the small vibrations of this lever um, with the hydro um, causes it to wear out prematurely. So the heavier the spring is, the less of those you're going to have. So he said you can pretty much use a lighter spring as long as you can go on a hill and put it on neutral and it doesn't roll. All right. However, if I do that with the OEM springs, um, it, it rolls backwards and it rolls forwards. I tried adjusting the uh, neutral position and it still did the same thing. And then if I put these on, it does the exact same thing again. So I'm just going to run these. Um, hopefully it's better for my hands and hopefully I don't wear out the hydros. I don't think it will. Um, and then, so then the other thing was... I got a replacement anti-scalp wheel for this side. Like I showed you before, they gave me the mounting bolts to it, but not the actual wheel. So I have that, I just gotta install that so it looks just like the other side. And then pretty much all done with this thing. All right, so I got that wheel installed and then I did a couple other small things like adjusted the throttle cable and kind of just messed with this a bunch because it wouldn't stay at full throttle when I would be using it, so I, I kind of jerry-rigged it a little bit, but got it to work. Um, yeah, I took that rivet out, put a bolt in there. Um, this was slipping in there, and I couldn't crimp it back to hold it right, so I just put a small bead of weld on there. And yeah, I know it's not the right way to do it, but now it's fixed, and if I need to mess with it again, I'll probably just wind up buying a new one because this one's in bad shape anyway. But it's working for now um, and this thing's pretty much all done the only other thing I might do to it is add it should have one of these on this side but um, I'm gonna see when I'm mowing with it first how annoying it is to only have one and then I'll go from there but pretty much this thing it just starts right up on the first pull um, and it works great everything works fine on it so it's pretty much all done now. I went through basically everything on this machine you guys saw when I bought it it had a lot of things wrong with it and you might be thinking like, oh, wow, like, did you even look over this thing before you bought it? And I did, but there's just so much wrong with this thing that, I mean, there's only so much you're going to catch while you're looking at it in the, in the 20 minutes while you're there, there's only so much you're going to catch. So like this thing, yeah, I guess you could say I got screwed on it. I did pay a good amount for it, but you know, it was lower than, uh, what I would have paid for a good working SWZT. So if I sold it now, I could probably make a little bit of money on it. Um, but, you know, it, it's also hard to tell how much you're actually going to get for these things. So, all in all, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. But, yeah, so this thing is pretty much all ready for the season. Um, it's early spring now, so the grass isn't really growing. Or it's really, really early spring. Um, so, the grass isn't growing yet, so I haven't really tested it out mowing with it. But it should be good. The blades are all sharp. Um, everything on the deck seems fine. I leveled it now. So it should be all, all set and ready to, to uh, cut some grass. So if it's not cutting grass well, I'm sure I'll make a YouTube video on it and you guys will see it. But that's going to be pretty much it for this video, guys. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section down below. But that's pretty much it. So don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.